As Walmart establishes stores in Angola, retail industry watchers say larger trends are taking place in a country once defined by civil strife. Now here to tell us about some of those trends, Pedro Neto. Now Pedro, we know that Walmart's presence in Angola is a signal of larger trends relating to demographic shifts. Can you tell me a little bit about them? It's good for everybody to know that last month uh, came out the first census of the population in Angola after I think the last one was done in, uh, before the independence. So last month we came to know that the population in Angola is now around 24 million with a large concentration around Luanda, the capital, with around 7 million and that imply and with a young population more than probably close to 50 percent. We have now a growing consumer segment. The importance of the, the medium class is increasing. Uh, we came, came to the conclusion after a recent study from one of the large South African banks that uh, the medium class represents around 25 percent of the households, that was a surprise. So there is really a demand for an organized retail sector. And that, as uh, we have seen on the last two years, after the first uh, retail distribution chains coming from Portugal, that was usually the first players in the market, we have seen ShopRite, the first South African, and now more recently we have seen Walmart. So, and there is a trend really to increase the size of the retail sector. Now, according to your company's own retail and growth assessments, there are a lot of other large chains that are poised to enter into the Angola retail market. Do you think that locals have the purchasing power to be able to really embrace this change? The end of the Civil War is 2002. We have seen an enormous grow of the medium class and, uh, and also of the, the need from lower prices on the products that people need to consume. And you have a country, like many others in Africa, where informal market represents 7 to 80 percent of the business that is done. And really the entering into the market of the large players represented lowering the prices. People have more things available, people have, have more access to products. Okay? And they have a huge impact on the population. You can buy things today, after the last two years, much cheaper than two years ago. So we've heard about the growth and enthusiasm amongst some of the big players. But then what happens to the smaller players? Do they still have a place in the local market? The informal market exists and will continue to exist and has a strong presence. And also, in terms of the large chains, the reality is that today, probably the largest player and the most important competitor is a local brand that has established in the last two years, has gained all the best positions in the market, the best places to open. So Walmart has really a lot to do in order to, to be the first on the market. It will be very tough to, to be the, the leading player. So your keen insight has told me that there is an emerging middle class. And what happens with any emerging middle class is they are increasingly demanding of the government in terms of reforms. Tell me what sort of demands are being made in terms of infrastructure development and other sectors as well. For the government, education and wealth sector has always been of a high priority. But in the recent years, what we've seen is a demand for better transport infrastructure. You have seen in the capital, in Luanda, some initial steps in order to improve the transportation system. We have now a kind of ferry boat scheme to move people around the city because there is not yet, a, you don't have a, a rail system, you don't have a, you have a small rail network, but you don't have an underground system. So people, moving people around is difficult. Mm. But I think in terms of the retail sector, the most critical point is that you have a, a national program by the government uh, that uh, from 2013-2017 that really has inside a plan to develop a platform of the logistical stations, freezing stations, because that is very important for the development of the retail sector. Because one of the things that you are now viewing on the market is that the players want to, inter uh, to verticalize the chain. So the largest retailers don't want just to sell, they want to produce also in the country. Because in Angola, as in many other countries, almost everything is imported. And that is the main thing that the government wants to change. So the key now is to produce locally. And to produce locally, you need logistic platforms, you need to have freezing facilities across the country in order to produce and then accommodate the products and then transport to the main cities. Now with such intimate insight into the local market, can you tell me about what sectors still need to be tapped into? The local expertise on the retail sector, if you have the chance to visit Luanda, it's already at a very top level. If you see the, the largest uh, retail chain at the moment, Caro, that is a local brand, they are using the best consultants that you can have access worldwide. They have the local, their own brands. They are doing everything as in any other market. So they are really trying to train people, 
having the best human resources, really transferring know-how to the country. Of course, it's not an immediate process, but they have started a couple of years ago and they are really betting on that. With your intimate insight of what is happening and the emerging trends in the country, what role does your company play in future development? We have a long experience in Angola. I've been going there almost every month since 2000. Uh, and really what we want to do and what we are doing is really being a bridge platform hub between the local players, the local investors and the international community. If we have an international chain that wants to set up in, in Angola, we can support them in coming to the market, understanding who, the, who are the best players, trying to advise on the mistakes that we should not make or the things that are more appropriate to do. And at the same time, we want to be recognized and we are achieving that from the local players as an entity that can support them in getting investors from abroad and supporting them on their expansion plans and supporting them on their internationalization activities. It's a challenge. Well, an exciting challenge that you've taken on. Pedro, thank you so much for joining me Thanks today. A lot.